Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 196. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega series. Now let's get into the content. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Enaba in the description down below. Like I said, I, I really cannot get along with Road America. It just doesn't... I'm not a fan of it. Obviously not here to please everyone either, because I'm I'm gonna be honest, I don't like the track. This sounds like a song about sex. It's talking about going deep inside. That's probably not something I should open a video with, because this is the final episode. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. I love that. Shout out to AC. We can drive it there. Um, I really not into Assetto Corsa at all. Uh, the only problem is... Is it in Assetto Corsa base game? Because if it's in the base game of Assetto Corsa, I might have already driven it. But uh, if it's not, then I I won't have. Um, but I'm, I'm not a fan of Assetto Corsa. I can't get along with... It's a mod, fair enough. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not a fan of modding games. Um, I've had this debate before, and I've sort of finalised and said, but well, I'm not a fan of modding. The problem that I find with modding games is the fact that it is a long process. To get things right, to get them the way that I want them... I. I also don't like inconsistency with games. I don't like going from one mod to another and it's the quality is inconsistent or um, the gameplay experience is inconsistent. I, I don't like the, that part of modding. So the fact that things aren't 100% consistent every single time, the fact there might be mods that make the quality of the game look better for certain things, but I want it to be for everything. I want everything to have a quality improvement. I don't like mishmash of qualities. That was one of my biggest bugbears of Gran Turismo 5, by the way. Is the fact that um, some of the cars in that game are just ports of the PSP versions of those cars. For example, a great example, the Bugatti Veyron. In Gran Turismo 5, is straight out of Gran Turismo PSP. They remodeled it for Gran Turismo 6. Yeah. Not a fan of Content Manager either. It's such a messy looking app as well. Like, Content Manager was designed based off of Windows 8. <coughs> oh, geez. Yeah. I'm just not a fan. Not a fan at all. I've tried modded Minecraft. Modded Minecraft, right? The, every single time it didn't work. And the only one that I got that worked somewhat okay was VR Minecraft. And that still was a bit meh. Right, I've tried modding GTA. GTA modded is dog wank. Everyone that's tried to get me, oh yeah, you should play... Um, What's it called? You should play GTA fucking RP servers and hop onto custom GTA drift servers and all this shit. I'm like, no. I've been asked by about four or five people 
um, about it. And I've said, yeah, tried it. Every single time I've not jo enjoyed it. It's dog wang. But again, it's partly down to the fact that it's not consistent. There's a huge inconsistency. The amount of times I've gone on modded GTA and it looks completely different to GTA. And half of the stuff is GTA assets, half of the stuff is custom assets. And it, it doesn't make sense. Consistency is a very important thing for me when it comes to video games. Oh yeah, admin's just a knob. But I, I cannot stand the inconsistency that comes with modding games. Like, if, okay, I would much rather if a game developer was like, right, well we want to support modding, so, we're going to hire a team that will make what the community wants. And it will be vetted by us, approved by us, and we will make it publicly downloadable in our game. If every game developer did that, even a so Corsa. Obviously, I know they can't because of licensing and whatnot, but... Holy shit! That would be a good experience, because guess what? It would be consistent to the rest of the fucking game. <laughs> That's one thing I hate, it's just something like Teardown. I need to get Teardown. Is it a good game? Because if you tell me it's a good game, I'm buying it tonight, because I want to play it. I've been craving playing something that's just destructive. Uh, right, I'm buying it. Maybe not tonight. I'll wait till I get paid. I get paid in two days, so I'll buy it then. Yeah, so I may have to use a bit more than the rest of the brewing cells. I keep going from P1 to P3, and then back up to P1. Pop. Little tap on the bunda. see it. Oh, that's easy. Then you play the game and... Oh, fuck. How do I do it? Oh. Oh, I'm not a fan of that. Maybe not, then. Maybe I'll wait for it to go on sale. Give it a try. Honestly, Paul Robinson, back in 2011 and 2012, made 
absolutely amazing songs and then all of a sudden went to shit. Proper like, I don't even know what genre of music, but the only song since 2012's Language that I actually like from Portal Robinson is Shelter. The rest of them just, it's not the same. I want this kind of music from him. Yeah, no, I'm a huge... Uh, I don't know. I just... I don't like modding. I'm just hoping that... There can be a little bit of consistency, you know? Can't get along with money. Honda Racing. Whoop, whoop. See, I think, I think that'd be quite cool. San Andreas in like an actual good quality. That'd be sick. <laughs> it's fried. I'm excited to get this finished today. We've got three more races after this, and then this game is done. Ow! What the fuck are you doing? Tomorrow is the big day, though. Tomorrow is the legacy drop for Sneak. Uh, the tubs are probably only going to be a available for like a couple hours, which I'm... Uh, they've got three flavors. So they've got unreleased, which apparently tastes like either Love Hearts or Iron Brew, which means basically uh, half of the population are morons and the other half are not, unless it doesn't taste like either. And I don't know which side of the population it'd be on, because whatever I taste would be true. Because I know what Iron Brew tastes like, because I eat a fuck ton of them. I drink a fuck ton of it. And I know what Love Hearts tastes like, because I've eaten a fuck ton of them. So, and I know they both don't taste the same. I don't go and eat Love Hearts and go, ooh, that tastes like Iron Brew. So, you know. But, um, no. Apparently the unreleased flavour is supposed to taste like that. Blackout is supposed to be cherry and vanilla. Which I actually really like the sound of. Um. Oi! Why the fuck are you pushing me off? Stop acting like Verstappen, you absolute knob cheese. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Pure aggression. Yeah, and then the uh, last flavour is Royal Blood, which is orange and pomegranate. And I really like pomegranate. So I'm torn between whether I get Royal Blood or Blackout. Or both. Or all three. So. I think I might get Royal Blood and Blackout. I know Zeno. Zeno, you're here for the last episode, technically. 
because I've started recording the last episode of Forza Motorsport 3. This is it. This is the last leg. And Joe you know was even worse that I've realised the last race that I'm going to do in this series is going to be Laguna Seca. Another track that I hate. I don't like it. Laguna Seca is amazing. I hate the track. It's designed for American vehicles. Laguna Seca is right hand corners. Right, I get that for American cars it's brilliant, but I prefer long sweeping corners. Fast long sweeping corners. I don't get along with slow right-hander corners. Which is why I hate the first section of this track. Because the first section is this slow. Yeah, but the difference is... That's kind of the point. If a track can't be raced by every vehicle, it's not a great race track. It's just a very specific track. Like when you're trying to judge a race track. Like you look at Magello, for example. That's a great race track for absolutely everything. Because he's got a lot of long sweeping corners. I'd love Magello to get added to Gran Turismo. It was so good. They didn't even add it to F1 2020 when the fucking COVID calendar hit. I'm like saying Spa is an awful track because the straights are too long for an MX-5. But I'd, I'd say Spa, right, is a very specific track for really fast cars. Like, genuinely. I, I'm not a fan of... It's really hard to explain without actually driving the track and explaining it. But it feels shit if you're driving... Like, uh, uh, it's really hard to explain. But when you've got a car that doesn't go around a track well, it just feels shit. And the fact is, a lot... I, I love taking an American muscle car because American muscle cars and particularly a lot of American cars are designed for going fast in straight lines and slowing down very quickly. It's not very good at with their handling performance. <laughs> so when it comes to Laguna Seca, something like that, where there's not a lot of long sweeping corners... And it is mostly just... It's fair enough. Where even the fuck did that happen? Ouch. The fact is, these are all European race cars designed for long sweeping corners. I don't know. I'm just not a fan of Laguna Seca. Those kind of corners are just dog wank. And so is that car. J 
Sure, one of the few... What about Sonoma? Sonoma used to be Infineon, right? That one I actually quite like. I think that's quite a good track. I think Sonoma's quite a good track. But Sonoma's got quite a lot of flowing corners. I don't know. I just don't like... Laguna Seca is a big no. If you were to give me three... Tr like, if you were to give me a track and say, Right, do you want to pick this track? Most UK tracks are dog wank. Not UK tracks. The, U the problem is that most of the UK tracks that actually are sort of famous... Brands Hatch, uh, fucking Silverstone, they are dog wank. I am not a fan of... Brands Hatch is terrible. Like... Brands Hatch Indie Circuit is maybe okay, but it's too short. Brands Hatch is a terrible circuit. Silverstone, even worse. Silverstone is terrible. If you were to get some other UK tracks, for example, Donington Raceway, Donington is amazing because there's some, there's a couple of sweeping corners, there's some surprising corners, you've got a nice fast paced chicane, you've got a hairpin turn, Donington is a good track from the UK, um, Knock Hill, fucking amazing, Knock Hill's got his a very similar sort of thing to the corkscrew. It's not as aggressive, but the first and second corner round Knock Hill goes uh, sort of right and downwards and then left. It's got this long sweep and left, and then you come into a 90 degree corner, but it you have to slow down for it as if it was almost a hairpin. Um, you take this 90 degree corner, and then it sweeps up, and then you have like a reverse corkscrew again because you go up the hill and then you've got this left and right as you're going up. You can get airtime if you take the corner wrong or if you take it right. It, it is beautiful. It is a beautiful lap. And then you have quite a long straight into a hairpin that takes you back onto the main straight. Knock Hill is a good track. And Knock Hill also can be converted into a rallycross circuit as well. So Knock Hill has a rallycross route, which by the way, Knock Hill's rallycross route is fucking phenomenal. It's so much fun. But the problem is Knock Hill doesn't get put in any games other than Project Cars. Because obviously Project Cars is a very British circuit based game. Um, and Donington also was in Project Cars but wasn't in anything else. Because again, that was a very British inspired game because most motorsports are either American or British. Like... Oh yeah, 100%. The developers of Project Cars 2 were based. They were biased as fuck. Picked American and British tracks. But at the same time... What's the, um... Is it Watkins Glen? I quite like Watkins Glen. The one that they added to Gran Turismo. I think that one's quite a nice one. Sonoma's quite good. I just, I don't get along with Laguna Seca and I don't get along with Road America. Those are two American tracks I just cannot stand. A lot of the other American tracks I'm a huge fan of. But I just cannot get along with Road America or Laguna Seca.
Man here jokes, so you gotta get loose with the Henny and the Coke. If the man don't dance, he's done. American cars are mostly built about speed. Yeah. That is pretty much it. So a lot of the tracks are not built for handling or being able to have decent handling. They're not designed with downforce or anything like that in mind. They're just... That's why you... I find that American cars with that sort of handling of, you know, an American car is a lot more suited for an American track. And anything else, Japanese, European, suits anything else. It's a very unique formula. It's fun, don't get me wrong, it's fun. But driving a European car around an American track is fucking challenging. Same with driving an American car around a European track. It's fucking challenging. Wait, did I say the same thing twice? I can't remember. Anyways, driving one round the other, no. It's difficult. Boom, American car. I mean, to be fair, we'll just, I get the appeal of it. We got this powerful engine. It goes fast. Woohoo! But obviously, fast can only get you so far. Fake ID. Pick a fake ID. Pick a pick a fake ID. American cars actually have some really strange laws that I don't think you realize. Um, fucking, what's it called? I think what, one of the things, uh, so the Bugatti Veyron in the US looks completely different to the European or any other ones, because apparently, um, I believe they need side blinkers. They're mandatory in America. You also need orange reflective bits on the car as well, as far as I'm aware. Uh, these are for like factory cars. But obviously then, in America, you can just build whatever you want. Say it's not a factory car, and then it's road legal. I don't know, but America's road laws are strange. Very strange.
beep, beep. Oh my gosh. I was looking at chat. Past road where they through the Texas where most people do that and you're good to go even when it's rusted out. Yeah, exactly. A lot of the stuff that happens on US roads wouldn't wouldn't work in the UK. Hundred percent. One thing I will say that I think needs to change, I think the UK needs a higher speed limit. I don't think 70 is a good number. Bum, 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 bum. Make the speed limit 80 miles an hour. I want to cut some time off my journey, thank you. And cut half an hour off. And I'll cut the Peugeot off as well. Hey, look, there's your rusty Peugeot 206. Which is left. We've got two races left. So after this one, we got two races left.
Kato, I've already discussed this before on Twitch. Come on. Taking the piss. Not cool. You have it simple. Right lane is slow lane, and two more on the left are fast passing lanes. Yeah, that's pretty much the same in the UK, but the other side round. Because obviously we drive on the left. So you sit in the left lane and then you overtake using the right lanes. And obviously if you're overtaking an overtaking car, you then use the lane on the very far right. Come on, get the fuck out of the way. Okay, that was terrible. I don't even know why it didn't turn around the corner. Move! Get out the way. When the wheels come down Diesel's pulling through with loaded trailer. Okay, again, I don't get why the fuck the car isn't slowing down. How damaged are the brakes? That should probably be the question that I should be asking. Not damaged at all. So this car is just dog wank at slowing down. So much on your own. That would be funny. That'd be funny if they could do that. Red Bull should do that. I'll be honest, Red Bull, right? Uh, the F1 team that everyone wants to... Obviously, I'm not a fan of Red Bull. But the stuff that they do, it's it's brilliant. Like, they have a phenomenal PR team. Okay, the fact that that Peugeot is just parked in the road... doing that. That was awesome to be fair. That was awesome. That was just like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Right in front.
Oh my gosh, this is going to be close again. No, I need to rewind. I'm sorry. I'm not redoing this. Why the f Ah, come on! How do I get from that close to losing so much time? There we go. That's more like it. I'm not sitting down for 20 more minutes. I'm <laughs> doing that. What that? Oh my gosh. It is kind of funny because obviously they had announced, oh yeah, by the way, we're leaving. And then everyone was like, oh, why are they leaving a job that they enjoy? And then they made their own channel and said, we left because we wanted to leave. And then the race went, we let Tommy go because it was time for a new a change of face and it was like the race just outed themselves as just firing them <laughs> it's like what morons and now people fucking hate the race and then fucking WTF1 as well they're all they all have like their own media WTF1 was such a good YouTube channel until they kicked out man Tommy and now that channel's dead They've killed the channel completely. Like, it's become so irrelevant now. Oh, look at this. This actually has quite a good interior. I have no clue what that was. Whoa. Yeah, I'm really, really, really concerned about, like, F1 as a whole. Like, I used to be a huge fan of Formula 1, and now I just, I can't. Like, what's the point? It just defeats the purpose of... You can't enjoy something if the community hates it. And as well, why on earth is there three races in America? Don't get me wrong, I think the new, the Las Vegas circuit is actually pretty cool looking. I think Miami's pretty good. We don't need Circuit of the Americas as well. On the calendar. What we do need, right? Obviously, oh yeah, well, America's quite a big place. Well, so's Australia. Australia's a big place. China's a big place. Yeah, maybe there are too many European circuits on the F1 calendar, but do you know what we could do? There are a couple of good Australian race circuits out there. There's one that's in grid, I believe. An Australian one that's in grid that's actually a really awesome looking track. The supercars go around. There's Mount Panorama. Okay, yeah, Mount Panorama's a bit of a push, but there are some really good tracks around Australia that they could quite easily do a second race in Australia. They do two races in Australia, two races in America, two races in South America. I think we need another South American one because there actually is only one race, I believe. I think it's just Brazil. I think we need another American ra uh, South American race. But technically, there's Mexico, but I don't know whether that's north or south. If it's north, then yeah, we've definitely got enough North American races. We don't need four of them. I think it is North America.
But yeah. Definitely need some more. So obviously, Japan's got one. It shouldn't be based off of who's paying more money. That's for sure. Especially the fact... I, I think there's too many Middle Eastern tracks as well now. Because we've got Qatar. We have Bahrain. Saudi Arabia. Abu Dhabi. That's four Middle Eastern tracks. Again, yeah, I know there's a lot of European tracks as well. I swear there's a good circuit in South Africa as well. I can't remember the name of it, but there's this racetrack in South Africa that's actually pretty good. They could go there. There's got to be some more variety in Formula 1, because... Yeah, adding more American tracks makes it less European tracks. But at the same time, there's too many American tracks now. Like, I think Australia needs two rounds. 100%. I think it'd be nice to have another Australian circuit, actually. On the F1 calendar. Bring back Portimao, because that was a good track. Uh, get rid of... Circuit to Catalonia. I know it's just been remade, but... Catalonia is... In terms of F1, it's quite boring as a spectator event. Monaco can go. Because every time we say Monaco can go, it becomes exciting, but it's boring for like three years beforehand. Bye-bye, Monaco. Get out of here. Hehehe. <laughs> Nurburgring. What about it? What, a track that needs to be on the calendar? I would love to... If you're on about that, I'd love to see Nurburgring make its way onto the calendar. I know why it's not on there, though. It, it won't ever go back on until they put runoffs at the end of every single corner. And the Nurburgring's so big and there's not enough space for them to do that is just not realistic. <laughs> the fact is, if you put those safety measures into the Nürburgring, you would have... Well, it, it would get rid of the... I will say out of... I may hate driving around the Nürburgring because it's difficult, but I think it's one of the most beautiful tracks out there because it is just like racing in a forest. It is so beautiful in that that regard. It ruined the charm of the track. I know why Nurburgring's not on there. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you on that one. Hockenheim's a bit pants. It's not dreadful, but it's not amazing either. Um,
eyes are open wide. So there is definitely a problem with this game. Um, I don't know whether it's the fact that I'm just not used to handling model anymore. Because of the fact that I've played so much other games since. Like, I took six months off. But it's very easy to lose grip in this game. And it's irritating me more than anything. But, hopefully, once I start with Motorsport 4... And I'll properly adjust to that game from the beginning. And I hope it's going to be so much better. Also, I've noticed the frame rate of my webcam has gone down. And I think it's because the lights are off. And it's dark in here. So it's sort of like doing post-processing to make it brighter. Yeah, if, if I was to say, right, dream F1 calendar, I think it would start out with Bahrain. Because personally, I think Bahrain is a great first circuit. I'm so I'm so glad they shifted Australia over to be fair, because of it. Um, they start with Bahrain, we get rid of Saudi Arabia, we go straight to Australia. So Australia is second race of the season. Albert Park, same as normal. Uh, then we go to Then we go to Magello. Doing an Italian GP. To hype up the Italian fans. Right. Then we go to Uh, what's in China? China's still a good track. China for round four. Round five will probably be. I, I'm I'm going to say 15 rounds because I'm round five Miami. I love round Miami. I think it's also. Uh, I then want to say Brazil sick because I feel like Brazil being earlier in the season is a lot more exciting than later and I don't know why so I'm going to put Brazil 6 as like the 6th race uh, get rid of Silverstone Silverstone's going um, I say Spielberg Red Bull ring. Go to the Red Bull ring next. What the fuck is Tesco sending me emails? Mexican GP. I quite like the Mexico track. I think that's quite a cool F1 circuit. That second Australian track that I was thinking of. I don't know what it is. That would be a nice one to go to. Um, race number 10, we'll probably say.
Oh shit. I don't even know. I know for a fact I want Las Vegas to be the the closing race. I would want the race that ends out the season to be Las Vegas, because I know it would be a spectacle. <coughs> Especially with all the lights, it would be stunning. I'm excited to watch the uh, Las Vegas GP though. I think it's this year. Yeah, Las Vegas, the layout, from what I've driven, um, is it, it's a very similar vibe to Miami, but it's in, at night time rather than daytime, and it's got all the lights. So, it is pretty good. Normally, I hate street circuits. I don't like Baku. Obviously, this is personal, like, driving in the F1 game. Not a fan of Baku. Not a fan of Singapore. Not a fan of any of them. But Miami and um, Las Vegas. Oh my god, they're so fun to drive. Oh my gosh. Honestly, this car is on the edge every single corner. I think it's the fact that I'm turning in too early because in a lot of other games, you have to turn earlier than you want to turn. I found F1, you need to do that a little bit. Um, WRC, the whole point is to turn like two fucking seconds before you want to turn. It's crazy. Tell me that you knew me. This is it, the last corner. And then we got Laguna Seca left. Laguna Seca as the last track. It's a very interesting choice. I got 10 thumbnails to get. And then 10 videos to edit tonight. But I'll only be editing once I've tidied up because me rooms are shitted. This is it though. This is the final race. Just 
15 laps around Laguna Seca. Don't tell me. Uh. Maybe it's just driving the good sake on Gran Turismo's dog wank, then. <laughs> to be fair, it probably is. Nah. The track still has its bugbears. back here. Good start so far. Chop, chop. This, this song's so good. Bring me along. It's a foundation. Good old bit of sub focus here.
Nice. It's a foundation. This is so good. Subfocus makes some of the best drum and bass songs out there. Good old slip now. Sleep not yet. I need to sleep not. Right now. I need to sleep. I'm tired. I'm gonna finish this off, cook some dinner, and then. I'm gonna cook some chicken steaks and shove them in a wrap. Because that's nice and easy and quick. Time is it in the UK? Uh, it is 7 p.m. But I, uh, I've had about eight shifts in a row the last few days, and I've been pretty busy. So technically, today's my only day off before I do another big chunk of shifts. So. Bit of monkey wrench. Whoa! Oh, uh, that's to do with my merch, which reminds me I need to actually do some designs for that. I need to redo all my merch. I'm gonna make some new ones. I 
nine ten. Over five years ago, quite a while ago. One last thing before I quit. Don't wanna be your monkey branch. <laughs> Such a tune. Oh no, I've gone wide. No, come on, get back on track. Two took five years. No. How, how did you ask in when I started my channel go to it took me five years to complete Motorsport 1 and 2? <laughs> Where did you get that from? You asked me how, how long ago did I start my channel? Five years ago. I didn't mean I started Motorsport 1 five years ago. <laughs> I created a channel before YouTube was a thing. YouTube was but a figment of your imagination. Modern Chuck Norris. Get fucked. Bum ba dum bum 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 ba dum ba dum. Final three laps. Come on, this is it. This is it. This is the ending. I'm giving back these jokes to the 2005. <laughs> I'm handing the phone to someone that gives a shit. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. That's all that reminds me of is just that trend. I'm handing the phone to someone and then they shit on them. <laughs> like... 
I'm handing the phone to Gareth. Wow, what a name. Gareth. It's a bridge of Yukon Burn. No one like me can compare it. I'm not going to be a flying high with no propellers. That was none of my concern. Isn't that the turbo brand? Probably. Everything's a turbo brand. 2-2, two, two, final two. Oh yeah, Garrett rings a bell. Probably. There's also a gun brand, I think. Bang, bang. Tesco Turbo. That's great. Whoa! What? Uh oh. It doesn't even spool. It just goes. Every little helps. <laughs> no, it just starts going. Do you have a club card? <laughs> Unexpected item in bagging area. Remove this item before the turbo flyer. It's the final lap now. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. This is a moment that I've been waiting for for years. Like, I started playing Motorsport 3. Probably, I say, late 2009. When I got my first 360. Never finished it. Obviously, I've restarted the game. I am now... Less than 30 seconds away from being able to say I have 100%ed Forza Motorsport 3. Less than 30 seconds. Oh my gosh. I've done it. Oh my gosh, that's it! It's done! It is done! Oh my... Gosh! Ah! I don't even know what the fuck that was. Oh my gosh, that's it! Solid go! We got the achievement! Woo! Literally, man has finished himself. There we go. That is every single event completed in Forza Motorsport 3. Motorsport 3 completely 100% in. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. Uh, feel free to stick around because when this video goes live, uh, the next video is going to be Motorsport 4. So stick around. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.